In the last lesson, we took a look at how to identify and use functions within the PHP code, and there is just a large number of functions. There are several hundred functions within the PHP code to use. Now, in this particular lesson, we're going to kind of change the focus on creating our own functions to write our own code to be able to reuse over and over again whenever we desire to here within our code or within this particular page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the code that I had there from the last lesson and just leave the PHP delimiters and we're going to go ahead and create our first function. It's really easy to do. You just type in the keyword function and you'll notice that it turns blue. And this is going to let the code know that hey there's a function that's going to be created. After that I'm going to hit the space bar and type in the name of the function that I want to work with. And for this particular one the function is going to be called distance. And then what I'll need to do is after the function name and functions of course the names have to be all one word. It can use underscores and so forth, but it has to be one word with no spaces. Just keep that in mind whenever you're doing programming. Most everything has to be a one word type of thing. So I've got the distance is going to be my function's name. I've got the parentheses there. And then what I'll need to do here is I'll need to have an opening and closing curly brace. And so I've got an opening one that I just put in there. I'll go ahead and hit enter a few times and then close it. All of the code or the algorithm that's going to run whenever they call, whenever somebody uses this distance function is going to have to all fall within the opening and closing curly braces. So right now I've actually got one line, line number seven to write code on. And I can space that down as much as I want to make that as large as I need for all the code that I want to work with. So you can see I've got a function called distance. Let's go ahead and type in two different variables for this function. I'm going to go ahead and call this one rate. We'll set that equal to, let's just say 50. And then I've got time, dollar sign time. We'll set that equal to four. And this is just gonna be a simple function that does the distance, is gonna equal the rate times the time, and then it's gonna give us the distance, whatever our rate and time is. So what I'll need to do now is I'll go ahead and echo out rate times time. So we'll just say echo, and we'll do the dollar sign rate and then we're going to go ahead and multiply that by dollar sign time. We'll end that with a semicolon. Real simple function. Doesn't do a whole lot here other than just taking the two variables that I entered in here and then it echoes out their their answer for the rate times the time. So let's go ahead and save my page and then refresh it over here to view it, see what it looks like in the browser and nothing shows up. The reason why nothing shows up is even though that I did all this little work here to create the function, I never told my page to run the function or to do anything with the function. All I've done is created the function. So I'm going to go ahead and space down here a little bit. And you can see that here is my function. I've got the opening and closing curly brace. So somewhere down below this, I'm going to go ahead and call the function to be used. And so what I can do is just say echo out and then let's just go ahead and say distance. And distance is a function, so I'm going to go ahead and put the opening and closing curly brace or opening and closing parentheses there, and it's going to run the distance function for me. If I hit save and then refresh, you'll see 200 gets displayed, and you'll see that I actually told it to echo out a, the function distance, which in the distance function it actually tells it to echo out the rate and time. And so in reality, I don't have to do that twice. I can actually remove this echo statement here. Let's go ahead and remove it and just tell it to run the distance. So either way will work on this particular one. If I refresh it, you can still see that I've got 200 here. In fact, if I just change it here, 55, and then save my page and refresh it over here, you'll see 220 is displayed. So this is what's considered calling the function or, or basically making that function run that we have created. And now I can reuse this code over and over again as many times as I want. So if I just copy it and then paste it, you can see that I can paste it a few times here. It'll go ahead and run that function if I save it and refresh it over and over and over and over and over again. And so that's the beauty of a function is the fact that we can write code and then call it as many times as we want to run the code that's in here. Now in the particular function I have right here, it's kind of a simple function and all it does is just display the distance. However, I may want to add things to the function or I may have variables that I want to pass into this particular function. I've got rate and time set here automatically kind of hard-coded in this particular function. However, I may decide 
that I want to import the rate. And this is where we get into this whole parameter aspect of things. And so let's go ahead and take a look at reworking our function so that we can actually pass things into the function and then it does the calculation and then basically gives me an output. So let's go ahead and do that first with the rate. So what I'll do is I'll take this rate out. There we go. And I'm going to put the rate up here in the parentheses itself. I'll put dollar sign rate. And then what it's going to end up doing is it's still going to use the dollar sign rate here to do the calculation. However, we're now passing it in to my code. So I can actually delete that line and just have time equals four echo rate times time. If I save it and then refresh it over here, you're going to see that I've got a problem. And here's what the problem is. It says missing argument one or distance function. So they're saying that there's an argument or a parameter that's need to go, going to need to go in here. So here's how we'll do this. We've got distance here. We've got dollar sign rate. And you can see that it's being worked here. What I'll need to do is just type it in. So let's type in 44. I'll go ahead and hit save and then refresh it. You'll see now that it shows 176. So the rate now has to be entered here rather than in the function itself. And that's what the use of this parameter is it's that we're entering in here. So distance, it tells us to use rate. Now what if I want to use more than one parameter and enter more than one thing in there? Well, I've got rate here. I might as well use time as well. So I'll just put dollar sign time. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that line of code from there. And if I go ahead and hit save and then refresh, we're going to get our error missing argument two for the distance function. So I've got my first one in there. Now I need to set my second one. So I'll go ahead and put a comma there and let's just put five. I'll go ahead and hit save and refresh. And there we go, 220. So we've created now a function with two different parameters that we're going to use here. So here it is, the distance function, we've got rate, we've also got time. Both of those two things need to be inputted in this particular function in order for it to run properly, which you can see we did right there. We've got our rate and then our time. And then what ends up happening is whatever the name is that we have here, doesn't matter what we call it there, but whenever we want to use it within our code, within our function, it has to be the same name. So you can see dollar sign rate, dollar sign rate. So this 44 is essentially being passed in as dollar sign rate through this function and being used here within my statement. Same thing for time. Time is now five on this one here. It's being passed into this function and then it's doing the echo statement. So it's using my function distance with the argument 44 and then five for the second argument to give me a result. And so now the function this distance shows or echoes out the result already. However, we may not always want our functions to echo out an answer. In fact, we may want our functions to run something, return back a value, and then later on we can run some kind of conditional statement on it to see if it returned back a true or false or a number or whatever it is we're looking for. And in that case, I'm going to make this just a little bit more complicated here within our function itself. Um, everything else we've got here looks is going to look pretty much the same. I've got it, it says echo dollar sign rate and then dollar sign time. So it's going to echo my rate and time. Rather than echoing them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that value to another variable. So for instance, I'll put in dollar sign distance equals rate times the time, which is kind of still just normal. We're just setting the value now to the distance. In fact, if I save it and then refresh my page, it's not going to display anything because it's going to run distance right here. It's going to run my function with the 44 and 5. And so it's going to put that value here in the distance. However, we never told it to echo or display it to my screen. So what's it going to do? Well, right now it's not really going to do much of anything. It's going to do all that work for us. But what I want to do now is I want it to return a value out of this function. What I mean by that is we're going to enter one more line of code and I'm going to use the keyword return. Return and then we're going to go ahead and put in there the dollar sign and distance. And what will end up happening now is it's going to return this value, whatever the value is that's in here, out of my function so that my function itself will now be equal to or will hold the value of whatever distance is. So if I hit save and then refresh again you're going to see that nothing shows up still because it's not echoing anything. If I typed in echo in front of it, there we go, echo distance, and I'll hit save, 
and refresh, you can see now that 220 is being displayed. So this function is going to return back the result of distance. So you need to have that keyword return there and you need to tell it what it's going to return back to the function so that the function itself can provide some kind of value and we've echoed out that value here. And just to reiterate the importance of this return statement here, I'm going to go ahead and comment it out. Just make it look like we've never put it there. So now that it's turned green here, basically this line of code will not run. I'll go ahead and save my page and then refresh it. You can see nothing is going to show up now. And the reason being is because it's not being used or it's not returning a value. So when I'm echoing distance, distance is not providing any value for it to echo. However, if I go ahead and put those back in there and save it and then refresh it, you can see 220 now appears again. So I need to have that return value or return keyword in here to return out our value of our function so that I can do something with it like echo and then we're going to echo out the distance. Now in the next video we're going to talk about some comparison operators like the if statement and we could run some kind of if statement on this one here where we could say if distance is equal to something and our distance function is equal to something then do our code or testing it for true or false and so forth. So this is the video on creating your own functions here within PHP.